Well, it's great to gather together today with all of you from all over the area. I'm Pastor Steve, and I am blessed to welcome you to First Church today. As we did last week, we're doing something different because of social distancing. We're not gathering physically, but the good news is we can gather digitally with people from all over the world. So for those of you in our First Church family, we welcome you. And if you're new to worshiping with us, we welcome you as well. So come. Good morning. As we prepare to worship this morning, I want to invite you to join with me in a responsive call to worship as a way to connect with each other. Say these words with me, will you? Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes, comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Blessed is the one who comes with healing and compassion. Blessed is the one who comes with forgiveness and mercy. Lord, rest your hand of healing on our hearts today. Gracious Jesus, let us walk with you today. Amen. This next song is one of my very favorites. It's called Sweetly Broken. And it speaks to how we should be looking at the cross, especially at these times. cross I look to the cross I sing of its suffering I do drink of its work I do sing for on it my Savior both bruised and crushed that God is love and God is just at 
at the cross, you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so lost in love, I'm sweetly broken, holy surrendered. What a priceless gift Undeserving life Have I been given Through Christ crucified You called me out of death You called me into life I was under your wrath Now through the cross I'm reconciled At the cross you beckon me you Draw me gently to my knees And I am lost for words so Lost in love I'm Sweetly broken, holy surrendered At the cross you beckon me you Draw me gently to my knees And I am lost for words so Lost in love I'm sweetly broken Holy surrendered Today, as we continue to worship together, we're going to take just a moment so that we can give. You see, in the midst of the chaos, one of the things that I'm so thankful for is the generosity of this church and the members of this church. And so today, we get an opportunity not to be those that are consumed by a spirit of fear, but those that are consumed by a spirit of faith as we turn during this time and we give to the Lord. I see the King of glory Coming on the clouds with fire The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see His love and mercy Washing over all our sins The people sing The people sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I see a generation rising up to take their place. With selfless faith, with selfless faith, I see a new revival stirring as we pray and seek. We're on our knees, we're on our knees. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hear my heart 
Break my heart, but what breaks yours? Everything I am for your kingdom's cause. As I walk on earth into eternity. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the So today, as we turn to our sermon, the title of it is Help is on the Way. And, and I'm struck today that in, in light of everything going on out there, that more than anything today we need help. I mean, here's the reality as I sit here. And I look around and, and I realize that, you know, it's Palm Sunday. It's the start of Holy Week and church is empty. And I don't know about you, but for me as a pastor, that's incredibly unsettling. And more than that, as I sit here, there hasn't been a parade of kids and adults waving palm branches to open up the service and, and the music and the organ, and, and there's been nothing. And yet I'm thankful that on this day that you and I can connect via the digital technology that we have and the abilities that we have. And for that, I'm so thankful. So as I sit here and as Aaron sits up in the sound booth guiding this process and getting it online, I just wanna say thank you. I'm thankful that you're here today with me. And today we get to, to listen to God's word and we get to um, hear the story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem once again riding on a donkey and a colt. And I'm thinking about that today and I'm wondering, you know, in the face of COVID-19, in the face of all the uncertainty and all the things that have been canceled from tulip time to school, all these events, all these places that have been, you know, thrown upside down, I wonder would Jesus have not entered Jerusalem? Would he have said, hey, there's an epidemic going on and a pandemic and, and I'm just not going to go there? And that for me would be more scary than sitting here in an empty church. The idea that our Lord and Savior would decide to cancel. And, and thankfully, that's not who he is. But, but I want to invite you to come with me as we learn just who Jesus is today and how important to that, that is for our understanding that help is on the way. And we're going to turn today, we're going to turn to Matthew's gospel, and, and, and we're going to turn in our Bibles, and, and Matthew's towards the back, and we're going to turn to the 21st chapter today. And, and we're going to listen as I read the first 11 verses in Matthew 21. Listen to these words from the book that we love, starting with the first verse. Now, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her side. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. 
and a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Now when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends this reading from the book that we love, Thanks Be to God. So today, you know, there's these questions that are swirling in my head, and, and I want to, you know, start by saying, you know, we need to understand some things about Jesus today. You see, you and I today in the midst of the world and, and where things are at with this virus, we desperately need to understand some things about Jesus. And the first thing we need to understand about Jesus is this. He's the same yesterday and today. He doesn't waver from his purpose. And that is so critical today. It gives us hope and understanding that help is on the way. And I say this to you because while Matthew doesn't say it, Mark does in his gospel right before he tells the story uh, of Jesus entering Jerusalem, like Matthew does, he has this conversation recorded between Jesus and his disciples. It occurs in, in, in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 10. Let me just read it to you a minute. It's Jesus telling his disciples exactly what he's going to do. He, he's leading the disciples, and I'm picking up in, in chapter 10, verse 32, and he says, you know what? We are going to go up to Jerusalem, he says, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priest and the teachers of the law, and they will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Now think about that. Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen, and he didn't waver from what he was going to do. He was going into Jerusalem. He was going to the cross exactly as it had been written in the Old Testament. And that shouldn't surprise us. Paul, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, clearly states what we already know, that Jesus is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow, and we can count on him. He's always going to follow through. Listen to these words from Paul's letter to the Philippians starting in chapter 2 with the fifth verse. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made into human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself becoming, by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, the reality is, is that Jesus was riding into Jerusalem because he was glorifying God and he wasn't going to step aside from that role that he was playing. That's the promise that you and I have today is that you know what, Jesus is not going to change. He didn't change what he was called to do then. He's not going to change who he is today. It's just not going to happen. 
And, and, and that to me is exciting news. That's good news in the face of the world today that, that we have a Lord and Savior that doesn't change. And yet he rode in on that parade into Jerusalem we have this image of Jesus as this quiet, gentle, serene, clockmaker's son who was far different than the person that rode in on that horse. You see, Jesus rode in on that donkey that day because he was riding in to upset everything. He was intruding into Jerusalem. But if we think about it, throughout his ministry, he was always intruding into a, the lives of those around him, and he was always upsetting things. And I don't know about you, but in today's world, I need that image, because things in the world are so upset, they're so upside down, they're so different today. I think about the streets of the largest cities in the world today. How many of them are completely empty, even as we're sitting here today talking. The streets of our town, the streets of the towns in West Michigan, the streets of New York, you name it, they're all empty. And yet even if Jerusalem had been empty on that day, we know that Jesus would still have gotten on that colt and that donkey, and he would have ridden in. Nothing was going to deter him from the purpose that he had set out to do and the purpose that he was fulfilling because it was all for God's glory. There's tension, though, in this story. Tension for me, at least, and I don't know about you. You see, the tension we have in this story is that the people in this story that were listening, the crowd, they wanted a king. They wanted him to save them now from the Roman Empire. And there were also people in the crowd that were incredibly scared and afraid because he was upsetting their lives so much that they wanted to kill him. He was a threat to their power. And then there were probably those people in the crowd that were there out of curiosity. Who is this rabbi, this prophet, this healer, this son of David? They didn't understand that he wasn't who they thought he was going to be. His purpose wasn't theirs. Little did they understand that Jesus was not going to waver from his purpose. You see, he came to save the world from their sin then, and he's still working at it today. The crowd in this instance wanted it now. And how do I know that? Well, that's my second point. My second point is we need to be patient. The crowd, on the other hand, wasn't. And we know that because they were shouting, Hosanna, son of David, Hosanna to the Most High. And, and the word Hosanna in Greek means save now. You could insert the word us, save us now. They wanted it now. And isn't that the way of the world today? We want it now. Jesus wanted to come and save them for all eternity from death by sin. And he was willing to die on the cross. And yet they were shouting, they wanted him to be their king and they wanted it now, today. And I wonder, is that maybe why just a few days later they would turn on him and they would spit at him and they would declare that they would rather have Barabbas saved than Jesus because they totally missed it. I think sometimes you and I miss it as well. And so the key point that we need to remember today is that help is always on the way. Jesus is the same yesterday and today and he's coming to reclaim the world. The challenge for you and I is that we've got to be patient that's the difficult reality for us. And so the question I have for us today is, what do you want today? What do you want Jesus to be today? What do you want from him today? The reality is that 
what we want doesn't matter. And, and, and honestly, that's really a good thing because he's going to come and he's going to do what he's always done. He's going to reach out for the lost and the hurting. And right now, I don't know about you, but in the midst of COVID-19, there's a lot of people that are hurting and that are lost. And Jesus is reaching out for them today. He's reaching out for you and I. And we can understand without a shadow of a doubt that he's not going to waver from the purpose that God has set him upon, the purpose for which he came to this earth, the purpose for which he died on the cross. The other thing we need to know about Jesus in this uncertainty, in this time of when things are upside down, is that you know we need to know that we can turn to him at any time. You and I, we can lift our voices up in prayer to him and at any time. It says in Psalm 9, verses 9 and 11, that the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed and a stronghold in times of trouble. And those that know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. And that's my prayer today, is that you and I would seek the Lord that we would seek Jesus, that we would lift our voices because, you know what, here's the reality. Jesus is on the move. He's going to ride in and he's going to be there. And I don't know where today you are, where this Sunday finds you. There's no way to me to know what are the disappointments in your life, the failures or the missed opportunities and the twists of fate that you're dealing with, the layoffs, the things in life that right now are, are so hard to fathom and we really don't have an answer for when they're going to end. Everyone I talked to in this past week, interestingly enough, told me, you know what, we're doing just fine in spite of everything. Oh, there's a little bit of cabin fever, sure. And they're tired of being locked up and, and having to stay inside, absolutely. But the reality of, is this. Most of us, if we're honest are not doing as well as we look when we're sitting in our homes. And I'm pretty sure that isn't because we aren't dressed in our Sunday best, as some of you may still be in your PJs for all I know. And you know what? That's just perfectly okay. I know this, though, that you and I can take heart in our needs, in your need and your weakness, your despair. There's good news the one who came bouncing on the back of a shaggy donkey is the answer to your prayers. And he comes not only to stand in solidarity with us in this time of trouble, but also to redeem us and to save us. And for that, we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. As we gather to celebrate the last supper that our Lord shared with his disciples in this coming week. I want to read to you today about the meaning behind the supper. Listen to these words. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper which we are about to celebrate is both a feast of remembrance and of communion and of hope. We come in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent of the Father into the world to assume our flesh and blood and to fulfill for us all obedience to the divine law, even to the bitter and shameful death of the cross. By his death, resurrection, and ascension, he established a new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation that we might be accepted of God and never forsaken of him. We come to have communion with this same Christ who has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. And in the breaking of the bread, he makes himself known to us as the true heavenly bread that strengthens us in eternal life. In the cup of blessing, he comes to us as the vine in whom we rest if we are to bear fruit. So we come today in hope believing that this bread and this cup are a pledge and a foretaste of the feast of love, 
of which we shall partake when his kingdom has fully come, when when unveiled face we shall behold him made like unto him into his glory. And so since his death and resurrection and ascension, Christ has obtained for us the life-giving spirit who unites us all into one body. Thus we too receive this supper in true love, mindful of the communion of saints. Today, as we gather together virtually, I want to invite you to, to take a piece of bread or a cracker, whatever you might have at home, and then to take some juice, um, wine, or some water, or something to drink um, that will represent the blood of Christ and the wine that we're going to share together here. And now as we prepare our hearts, let us turn to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Holy and right it is in our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and all places, O Lord, our Creator, almighty and everlasting God. You created heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty, and you have given us life and being, and you preserve us by your providence. But you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior, who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. And with your whole church on earth and with the company of heaven, we worship and adore your holy name. In this supper, we remember the perfect sacrifice that was offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. And in the joy of his resurrection and an expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Today we proclaim the mystery of the faith together saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen and Christ will come again. And so send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf and these grapes from many hills into one cup, Grant, O oh Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. <clears throat> now, our Lord Jesus, on that last night when he gathered with his disciples, he took the bread. And as he broke it, he said, as often as you take and eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. In the same fashion, at the end of the meal, as he took the cup, he said, this cup is the new covenant, my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you take and drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. At this time, I'm going to invite you to take the bread. And as you do so, I just want to say to you, this is the body of Christ given for each and every one of you. Take, eat, and believe. I 
And now as you take your cup of blessing, I want to say to each and every one of you that this is the new covenant. This is the blood of Jesus Christ poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Take, drink, and believe. Now, as we prepare to close, listen to these words of praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Amen. At this time, as we conclude the communion service, I'd like to invite you to join with me once again in prayer. But at this time, we're going to lift up our prayers um, not just um, for the table that we have just shared, but also for those that are in need in the, this community and in the world. So as we pray, let us turn to the Lord now at this time. We praise and thank you, O Lord, that you have fed us at your table grateful for your gifts and mindful of the communion of your saints we offer to you our prayers for all people O god of compassion we remember before you the poor and the afflicted the sick and the dying prisoners and all who are lonely victims of war and injustice more specifically today we remember those who are serving in hospitals and in doctor's office, so as in patients' rooms and in rest homes and emergency rooms, quarantine areas, those carrying clipboards and stethoscopes and protective equipment, the burdens, reaching out and pulling close, pushing away and distancing. We remember that, you know, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and they held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady. We pray that for those who must carry, that you will help them to lift, and you will be the rock upon which they rest. To those who support in grocery stores, in pharmacies, delivering supplies and materials, delivering sustenance and hope, whose own route routines have become for others lifelines, we thank them lightly in reality, for they are relied heavily upon. And we remember our Lord who called upon his servant Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. For them we pray that your health and strength is preserved and that your work reaches beyond those that you serve. To those whose research in laboratories and clinics and in libraries, working in front of microscopes, patients and working behind masks and gloves, working through exposure and exhaustion, seeking to advance knowledge, eager to extend life, searching for a cure, those who wholly serve through mind, hands, and heart. We pray that your research is an act of love, yielding progress, hope, and life. For those who are afflicted with loneliness, with worry, with frustration, with fear, with disease, at home with family, at home alone, at work, at rest, in recovery, living and dying, though through what is known and what remains unknown, facing shortages, facing uncertainty, facing loved ones and facing fears. 
we remember the words that Jesus said. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And in this world, while you will have trouble, take heart, for I have overcome the world. May you face your affliction strengthened by the hope that fills you with peace and a peace that transcends understanding. All of these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, as we prepare to conclude the service, we're going to sing a couple closing songs. And as the praise team comes forward to lead you, we're going to sing uh, the song, Eye of the Storm. And so I invite you to come and join us as we lift our voices to the Lord in praise. We all know that these are challenging times that we're living in. But one thing that we all have is the love of the Lord behind us in the eye of the storm. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet, between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. But when I realize I've been let down by my friends and my family, I can feel the rain reminding me in the eye of the storm. You remain in control in the middle of the war. You guard my soul, but you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future I picture slowly fade away. And when the tears of pain and heartache are running down my face, I find my peace in Jesus' name. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. But you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. In the eye of the storm. You remain in control. Yes, you do, Lord. You guard my soul. But you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. As we prepare to close this service today, um, I've just got one announcement. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, I invite you to stay after the service and, and just chat and, and share with each other. Uh, you can connect via text. And now I want to invite you to receive the parting blessing. We do not know what the future will hold for us, but we're assured that whatever happens, God is with us. Our help is always with us. So let us follow Jesus boldly to the cross and beyond, for God's promise is good and true. Go into this week now with the knowledge that the resurrection will come, even when it seems there is no tomorrow. Be blessed and be a blessing with the courage to stand with those in need, for you are beloved of God. Go now in peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now join us as we sing together, We Are One in the Bond of Love. We are one in the bond.